So when we do the team picture, obviously we want to get the pads tight and kind of tuck your stuff in behind. Yeah, perfect. All right, point your feet straight. There you go. Yeah, I want to make sure I see that. You two switch. All right, uh, you got it right shoulder to shoulder, guys. Shoulder to shoulder. There you go. Okay, here we go. Eyes open. All right. And so ends another Red Wings season. And the goaltender, Helbert, will pick it up. His first win as a Detroit Red Wing netminder. And the Red Wings win the season finale here on the road in New Jersey tonight as they knock off the Devils 5-3. End of the season, wing wheel right now. Okay, here we go. Wing wheel, episode 10 on my mark. I think the work ethic of this team was there all season long, and I know fans didn't really get a chance to see behind the scenes like a broadcaster like myself seeing, but they really worked hard. The Red Wings had really three significant players that really surprised a lot of fans, and those players are Mo Sider, Lucas Raymond, and goaltender Alex Nedeljkovic. With Sider being nominated for the Calder Trophy, all three rookies are off to impressive starts to their Red Wings careers. You know, it wasn't a bad season by any means. It wasn't great. My job's to stop the puck. And uh, obviously we didn't do it. I didn't do it enough this year. There were some games that were blowouts this year, but they always came back, rebounded, and really put in a solid effort the next game or two. For the most part, what we ended up with, a team that's much more competitive and in games where they do get behind, that they have a shot of getting themselves back into it. We had some great moments and, and some tough moments, and you know, for a younger team, I think it's good to go through that you know, at this stage um, to really understand you know, it's a long season, things are gonna happen. And, and to me, that shows resolve, that shows character. And those are the types of things that you have to experience as a player to learn in order to get better. I hold myself to a certain standard and I didn't meet that standard this year. And, uh, you know, it's just gonna be plain and simple. It's not gonna happen again. We're not gonna be where we are right now. Is that everything I need for the summer? Yeah, you should have a laundry, jersey, socks. Socks, um, that, that was from your game bag. For the first time in seven years, the Red Wings are without a head coach. Yo, we're going to go straight to questions. No, you can just look at the TV. Okay. That's the camera. I'm ready? Yeah. Ready? All right. You know, I guess ultimately uh, to make a coaching change or to make that, to take that decision, I felt. You know, a team fundamentally that we'd kind of, I don't know if even plateaued is the right word, but uh, we'd gotten to a point where um, fundamentally, with and without the puck, we had regressed. I really, and I, I say this sincerely, Jeff did an outstanding job of leading this this team, this organization, in a very, very difficult circumstance. Uh, I mean, it's a tough feeling. You don't, you don't want to see uh, anyone get fired or lose their job. Um, you know, we knew what we were going to get, and he was consistent with that. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I thank him for, for his seven years.
Well, it's it's a, a moving forward move by uh, by Steve Eisenman. Uh, Jeff Blaschel did a, he did an excellent job and did what it was asked of him. Now it's the point where Eisenman says we need somebody else kind of lead the lead the ship from this point on. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Blash and, and the way that uh, he's handled things. You know, I certainly kind of uh, you know wish him success and and whatever comes next for him. We need to improve as a group defensively. Individually, our players need to get better defensively. And as a team, the structure of the way we play has to improve. And again, I go back to, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that we as a staff, and I include management and the coaches in that, it wasn't like we didn't address it. We just weren't successful in, in, in applying it. Whoever comes in, they're gonna be, it's the, the expectations are gonna be higher for this team in terms of results. But for somebody coming in, I mean, they've, they've, they've got assets here that can help them achieve that. You know, when I, when I wanted to become a general manager, I knew what I was getting into. I knew that, you know, you gotta do, make difficult decisions. You gotta have uncomfortable conversations. Um, do I enjoy them? No, I don't enjoy them. And I hope, honestly, I hope I never enjoy them. We, we have to deliver bad news. And at times we all have to hear the bad news too. Next for the Red Wings was the NHL Draft Lottery, where they waited to discover their fate for their first round pick. Yeah, everybody hopes, you know, you just like it's, you just like you got when you buy a, a lottery ticket for the for the big jackpot. You're just oh, hey, is this my day? I mean, that's I think that's what the you know fans and I'm the same way. I mean, I want to see that that the ball come out for pick number one. This evening we will conduct two draws to determine the order of selection for the first 16 picks in the first round of the 2022 NHL Draft. The Red Wings have still a 6% chance to get the number one pick overall, and that's better than having no chance at all. So every team is in the lottery, every team is hoping for that opportunity to get the first pick overall in the draft. The number 10 pick in the 2022 NHL Draft belongs to the Anaheim Ducks. The number 9 overall pick in the 2022 NHL Draft belongs to the Buffalo Sabres. The number 8 overall selection in the 2022 NHL Draft belongs to Detroit Red Wings. I'm not disappointed. You know, of course, I would have loved to have first or second pick, but it's still in the first round. We still have a bright future in this Detroit organization already. So adding another great player to that at the eighth pick would not be a bad thing. I expect the Red Wings to look at their overall center ice position and try to get stronger in the draft. And I think over the last several years, the Red Wings really solidified their blue line core. They've got great prospects that in the next couple years will be future Detroit Red Wings. And looking at this year's draft, there's a plethora of centers, especially in the first round that are available. Obviously with the uh, management team that Steve's put together, they know how to draft. They've had very, very good drafts under Steve Eiserman. And, you know, and I would expect that, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, will get a good player. The easiest answer, and it's probably the best answer I can give, is they're going to pick the best player available. When you're that high in the draft, whoever, if it's another defenseman, he'll, he'll pick the defenseman. The thing about Steve is he always thinks outside the box sometimes. So even though us broadcasters, who we think we're know-it-alls, know exactly what's going to happen, sometimes that just doesn't occur. It's the scouts that go in the trenches, the wing scouting staff work hard. I, I'd be fooling you if I tried to tell you who they were going to pick at number eight. With the season behind them, the Red Wings have much to look forward to as their off-season plans begin to take shape. I know we're entering the summer months, but there really is no off-season, not for this Detroit Red Wing team, because it's gonna be a busy summer. And when you take a look at what's ahead for the Red Wings, they've got the draft coming up in July, they've got the development camp, there's free agency. New coach, you've got new players, uh, rookie players coming in, uh, prospects coming into this lineup that we're gonna see. Uh, next thing you know, it's September and we're into the prospects tournament. So there's a lot of things going on this summer. It's gonna be an exciting summer. The Wings are very active right now, setting themselves up for next season.
So Red Wing fans, buckle up. We're just getting started.